My name is Michael Carbonaro, and I am a proud member of the autism community from Staten Island, New York. I am a proud advocate for Autism Speaks and the entire autism community. I am a figure skating coach for all people with and without disabilities and a loyal employee at We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym in Staten Island. I am also a college student at the AHRC New York City Melissa Reggio Higher Education Program at the College of Staten Island, and I'm a larger than life Broadway fan. I am humbled and honored to be with all of you here tonight in the beautiful Gershwin Theater, home of one of the best Broadway shows I've seen in my life, Wicked. However, I have a little secret to share with all of you. This is not my first time on a Broadway stage. When I was six years old, I got to experience Disney's The Lion King when it first opened at the New Amsterdam Theater. We had a backstage tour of the show. Backstage was really on stage. As we stood out there looking into the house, my mom told me, my brother and sister, to sing a few bars since we probably would never be on a Broadway stage again. So I looked stage left and stage right. Then I sang a couple, then, it's the circle of life. Woo! All those years later, all I can say is, Mom, you were wrong. <laughs> this is now the second time I sang on a Broadway stage. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. Being on the stage of Wicked, here with all of you, is the cherry on top of my Broadway fan Sunday. One more thing, cross off my bucket list. <laughs> this night means not so much not only to me, but to every single person in my life who has encouraged me to follow the yellow brick road. They get to share this wonderful dream come true, being on this beautiful stage, standing where two of my favorite theater actresses, Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel, have stood. <laughs> this journey to where I am tonight is not just mine. It belongs to every and most to all those individuals who have walked alongside me, advocated for me, and taught my mom how to advocate for me and helped me to find my voice. This long road to where I am tonight was not just one short day in the Emerald City. I was diagnosed with autism when I was two and a half years old, and two weeks after I was diagnosed, my father passed away. My mother had three children under the age of four and was so overwhelmed. She didn't know anything about autism, but she was about to learn. <laughs> she pulled out all the stops and had the help of my grandparents, extended family members, and friends. She still needed to figure out what to do with me and my future. A couple of weeks after my father's passing, my mom made a telephone call to my Aunt Pat, who was in the audience this evening. <laughs> my mom's lifelong best friend, and she sat with my mom to make a plan. Together, they got the ball rolling. She helped my mom get an early learning center seat at Volunteers of America, set up an individual education plan, also known as an IEP, and other related services. My Aunt Pat is a strong advocate for those with disabilities to this day. She has a beautiful son named Johnny, who is in the audience this evening, <laughs> who is diagnosed with Down syndrome, and he is the most amazing young man, and I am super honored to be in his life. I have thought of my mother because she came a very long way, and after all that time and effort, my future was unlimited. Another child was learning how to speak. I was nonverbal until I was four and a half years old. My mama prayed in Obina every night for me to start speaking. No, I think she prays in Obina for me to shut up. You know, for five minutes. I spoke for the first time when I saw figure skating on TV. I was watching Tara Lipinski and Michelle Kwan go for the, 2000, for the 1998 Olympic gold medal in ladies figure skating in Nagano, Japan. And I said to my mom, I want to do that. <laughs> After my mom finished crying, she spoke to a friend about a coach who teaching me how to ice skate. <laughs> Weeks later, she took me to the ice skating rink, and the rest I say was history. <laughs> ice skating has truly paid off for me. I was a competitive figure skater for seven years, I have passed five out of eight U.S. figure skating moves in the field tests and two out of eight U.S. figure skating freestyle skating tests. 
I currently work as an ice skating coach at the Staten Island Skating Pavilion and Onga Mark Ice Skating and Island Blaze Skating Academy. When I was seven years old, I had the honor of skating at Madison Square Garden, home of the New York Rangers! <laughs> Education has always been important to my family. My mother has a college degree, and my father was a physician. I wondered, hmm, how would education fit into my life? After early intervention, I went to Volunteers of America Staten Island Early Learning Center, where I learned for pre-K. It was there I learned to express my needs and wants, and that opened the door to my independence. After my time at VOA, I went to PS37 at District 75 school, and after the start of first grade, I began the inclusion program at PS38. There, Mrs. Peggy Hilton, who is also in the audience this evening, <laughs> I took on more challenging schoolwork and learned to balance my academics and extracurricular activities. I even skated before school. <laughs> IS75 is where I learned to accept the change of environment in school. I became accustomed to the changing of classes with my peers. I further developed my social skills and even performed in my first Broadway first school play, which sparked my love of theater. Surprise! <laughs> I learned that we had to give back in this life, and so I started my road of community service, which continues to this day. Susan E. Wagner is where I participated in the work-study program at Edgar Nursing Home on Staten Island. There, I learned to market my skills and was given the gift of getting to spend more time with my great Aunt Marie, a resident there during the last few years of her life. What I've learned from these special individuals at these schools and programs is that I can be anything I put my mind to if I stick to it and don't give up on my dreams. My brother and sister and I are all close in age. In fact, my sister and I are only 11 months apart. When she was starting to look at colleges, I wondered, hmm, where would I go? And what would I do after high school? I was always treated like my siblings. I had to do my chores, do my homework, and put school first. But now, I can feel a difference. No one was talking about college for me. After all those years of accomplishments, achievements, and all of the hard work, I hit the lowest point in my life. I didn't have a Medicaid waiver, so I couldn't get into a day half program or a continuing education program. I couldn't get a full-time job because I was not ready. I worked a couple of days a week at the skating rink, but I was bored and lonely and spending my time frustrated, sad, and feeling lost. I wondered, man, what did I do wrong? And what was next for me? After a lot of effort on my mom's part, and many, many prayers, I, my mom got me a Medicaid waiver, and I went to age or see Staten Island Day without balls. I explored my outside interests, got travel trained, and volunteered and traveled within the community. However, something was still missing for me. My younger brother started to look at colleges, and I really wanted to be like my siblings. I wanted more. I applied because I felt in my heart, a college education is important not only to me and my brother and sister, but my entire family. I applied to the AHRC New York City Melissa Regio Higher Education Program for the second time, and I was offered a seat. I was ecstatic. Just like my parents and siblings before me, I was going to get a college education. In the fall, I will be a proud college senior working my way through school, traveling there on my own with the help of Accessory again from time to time. I became a vice president of College Staten Island's Disney Club. I am also currently a college intern at the Pride Center of Staten Island and I work four jobs. With the support of my family, friends, coaches, mentors, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, teachers, paraprofessionals, in short, my village. <laughs> I can be anything I set my mind to if I work hard and stay focused on my goals. Before I wrap up, I'd like to thank a few people. I would like to thank Autism Speaks for all the work they do supporting individuals and their families affected by autism across the spectrum and their lifespan. Don't forget to support your local walk and hashtag Light It Up Blue. <laughs> Jackie Carnahan, Michael Holzer, and the entire Arts for Autism team for the work on this producing this event and making this dream a reality. Right now, if you are a parent or an advocate, please stand up.
teacher or mentor or coach, please stand up. Every tear or every nose you wipe matters. Because we knew you, we have all been changed for the good, and without question, for the better. Please, a nice round of applause for all these lovely people. <laughs> My wish for everyone on the spectrum is for you to know you can make a difference. You have a voice. You can do anything you want with your future. I know one day you will all be defying gravity. <laughs> At this time, I would like to ask my brother and sister to the stage to be recognized. in good times and in bad times. My brother and sister are awesome. They are beautiful, handsome, witty, and sharp. I'm sorry guys, I'm having a hard time reading your handwriting. Uh... But in all seriousness, they have a lot of patience with me, even when it's most difficult. They are my first and best friends, and one thing we learned in life, no matter what, family is all we have. And we, and we always have each other's back. With you and I defying gravity, they'll never bring us down. Woo! I've been accomplished so much in my life and been bestowed many accolades. But my journey is far from over because my name is Michael Carbonaro and there's a million things I haven't done. So just you wait, just you wait. And I remember. 